ladies and gentlemen, this is High Show, Hovannes' international show on AMGA, Armenian Media Group of America television channel. After a short commercial break, I will introduce tonight's guest. Stay with us. Yerevan printing da pahume da pagrutsam barsermun vorak. Menk mrtsaktsutsunis dursen. Yerevan da pagratu. Herakhos 81 Երևանի սրտում հանրապետության 58 հասցեում Էրնիսաժի հարևանությամբ գործում է Մեյսեն հնաոճ իրերի խանութ սրահը, որտեղ վաճառվող իրերի շքեղ տեսականին ձեզ մտովի կտեղափոխի վերածնդի դարաշրջան։ Անտիկ արվեստի աշխար։ Այստեղ դուք կարող եք տեսնել բարֆրաժեք արվեստի այնպիսի գործեր, որոնց համարժեքը ցուցադրվում է աշխարհահրճակ թանգարաններում։ Մեր հմուտ մասնագետները հաշված ռոպեների ընթացքում բացարձակ անվճար կգնահատեն ձեր հնաոճ իրերն ու կոկնեն վաճառքի հարցում։ Մեյսը բարֆրաժեք արվեստի աշխար։ Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to High Show, and now it's the right time to introduce tonight's guest. She is a beautiful, incredibly beautiful lady, incredibly talented actress and singer, Wendy Lynn Adams. Please welcome. Thank you, Havana. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Thanks for accepting my invitation and coming to the show. You're welcome. High show always starts from the beginning. Okay. Tell us about your childhood, please. Okay. Well, I grew up in a big family. Mm -hmm. There was ten children. Ten children. Eight girls and two boys. You have nine siblings. <laughs> Great. Well, anyway, my daddy was a preacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was raised in church. And uh, I started singing in church. And uh, from there, I started singing in school. Uh -huh. There was all kinds of contests. Uh -huh. And I, I always... There were, excuse me, sorry for interrupting. There were spiritual songs or... Uh... Pardon? Spiritual songs? Uh, in, in, in church, yes. But in, in, church, in yes. school, no. Uh -huh. In school, no. Yes. I sang a lot of like Connie Francis uh -huh. and stuff like that in, in, uh -huh. in school. Well, there was uh, always something going on as far as talent contests. Mm -hmm. And I would enter them. And some I won, some I didn't. And whenever we would have uh, like uh, drama, uh -huh. Class, drama class, and we would have uh, like plays and stuff. Mm -hmm. I always got the lead part nice. in school, uh -huh. and that was fun, you know, because I always, I always wanted to be an actress and I wanted to be a country singer. That was mm -hmm. my goal, uh -huh. and I enjoyed that, and uh, I had fun meeting a lot of neat people. Uh huh. How was the reaction of your father? My father, well, at first, I have to be honest, mm -hmm. <laughs> my daddy, he, he did not really like it. Yes. Because, like I said, he was a Baptist preacher. And he didn't want me going out and singing in, in clubs, especially, uh -huh. because he thought that that was, you know, a bad person. Yes. And it took years. And finally, he came around. And he realized I wasn't out there looking for anybody specific. I was out there entertaining. Uh -huh. And then I was in church, too. 
Yes. And I would always sing in church and things like that. It was fun. And we made it as a family. You know, when we would get together and stuff, he really wouldn't talk about my career. Uh huh. Not at all. How about your mother? My mom, she was more uh, accepting. Mm -hmm. And my older sister, she was more accepting. But the others weren't. That they they didn't understand uh -huh. what it was like, you know. And my other sisters, they would say to me, uh -huh. "You need to get a regular job." <laughs> and I said, "Don't you think that's a job?" <laughs> <laughs> It's not a regular uh, job, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I said, "Don't you think being an actress and all that is it, it takes time?" Mm -hmm. So I started, like I said, I started drama and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, my first real program that I got to do was uh, my uncle. He took me to uh, Worthington Dodge. Uh -huh. They were filming. They were, they were he filming was a commercial. He was, he was in that business or? No. Uh -huh. They were doing Worthington Dodge. They were um, a car company uh -huh. and they, they were on doing uh, a commercial. Well, I've never been stage fright. Mm -hmm. And so I go walking out on that stage and I, I, on there and I just start singing. Oh. And then Cal Worthington, he invited me to uh, come be on a show. He had a show called Worthington Dodge. Uh -huh. And so I did. And uh, there was another program before that called Town Hall Party. I was like 14 years old. 14. And I, so I got to sing on that. I got to go to the Grand Ole Opry, too. But uh -huh. Anyway, it was fun. It was something I wanted to do. It was my dream. Uh -huh. Because that's what I, I, I wanted to do. I, as far as, yeah, I had, had a regular job. I was a waitress at one time and everything. But that wasn't me. Uh -huh. I, Did you have any, sorry for interrupting. Did you have anyone who inspired you? Yes. The person that really inspired me was a Wink Martindale. Great. He heard me sing, and, and uh, also Cal, uh, it was uh, Cliffy Stone. Mm -hmm. And they were the big charts in country music in California. Yes. And so uh, they were inspiring me, and they would push me and put me in different areas to entertain. And uh, I like that. Like I said, my daddy, he, we moved. <laughs> we moved, so I couldn't do the thing anymore in California. Right. So right. we moved, and we moved to Arizona. Mm -hmm. So what do you think I did? <laughs> I started uh, going around and singing. Uh -huh. And I started, but before that, I would, in Santa Ana, California, uh -huh. I would take my bicycle and I'd ride up on, in Santa Ana on First Street uh -huh. and I would sing. I would sing to everybody and sell, I was selling glue, fix so glue, and I would sell that and sing. I'm and singing. so I, I knew what I wanted to do, but when we moved to Arizona, uh -huh. I got involved with the, the, the policemen and uh -huh. the firemen. I got involved with their their music, their, their concerts that they were having. And Did you have <laughs> any teachers at that time? No, all like my teachers. Like professional teachers? teachers all no. of all, everything I had, my house got broken into and oh. everything got stole. Oh. But anyway, what was hilarious is the fact that there was a, it was called a, a policeman's ball. Uh -huh. Now, you know how most kids, they would sneak out to go on a date. Yeah. No. I would sneak out to go sing. So this one particular time, I'm doing the show there uh -huh. at the police at the uh, policeman's ball, uh -huh. and what happens is they they have a drawing for different things, you know, and they had me pulling the the, the numbers out. Uh -huh. I pulled my own out, and so here they take all my pictures and everything, right? Put them in the paper, and they I got this beautiful set of Samsonite luggage, uh -huh. luggage, okay. Oh, Lord, I didn't know what I was going to do. I brought it home, and I put it in the shed. Mm -hmm. The next morning, my dad's reading the paper, and he looks at me, and he said, uh, where were you at last night? Uh -huh. And I never lied to my dad. Of course. And so I told him, and he looked at me. He said, where's the Samsonite luggage? So I told him it's in the garage. Mm -hmm. 
And he looked at me and he says, you know, I don't approve of this. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know that. I said, but it's me. That's what I want to do. And uh, I was like uh, 16 years old. 16. And I was uh, just led to doing music and acting. I loved it. I started with the Screen Actors Guild. Uh -huh. And I started doing little parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was fun. It was fun acting with these people, seeing these stars and stuff. It was hilarious. Uh, my first boyfriend when I was 14 uh -huh. was Ricky Nelson. Ricky Nelson. He was my first boyfriend. But he never kissed me. Uh-huh. Because we had a pact that he wasn't going to kiss me until I was 16. Oh. And I went home and I wrote it in my diary. My 16th birthday, my dad showed up. It never happened. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting, <laughs> but I have to interrupt our conversation for a very short commercial break okay. and we will be back. Stay with us. Մենք մրցակցությունից դուրս ենք Երևան տպագրատում։ Հերախոս 8 Երևանի սրտում հանրապետության 58 հասցեում Էրնիսաժի հարևանությամբ գործում է Մեյսան հնավոճ իրերի խանութ սրահը, որտեղ վաճառվող իրերի շքեղ տեսականին ձեզ մտովի կտեղափոխի վերածննդի դարաշրջան։ Անտիկ արվեստի աշխար։ Այստեղ դուք կարող եք տեսնել բարֆրաժեք արվեստի այնպիսի գործեր, որոնց համարժեքը ցուցադրվում է աշխարհահրճակ թանգարաններում։ Մեր հմուտ մասնագետները հաշված ռոպեների ընթացքում բացարձակ անվճար կգնահատեն ձեր հնավոճ իրերն ու կոկնեն վաճառքի հարցում։ Մեյսը բարֆրաժեք արվեստի աշխար։ We're back to high show with Wendy Lynn Adams. Dear friend. Yes. If I'm going to ask you. Okay. To sing. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Um, would you sing any Christmas song for us? This special uh, Christmas special program. Yes. I would love to. Okay. Then I'm going to give you the mic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please. This is one of my favorite songs. My daddy used to like this too.
Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. When and how did you come up with this idea to become a singer, to become a professional singer, finally? When, when I was little, like listening to uh, like uh, the country stars, mm -hmm. there was like Patsy Cline mm -hmm. and people like that. And it just, it, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, that was me. Oh. That was me. And I could never sing a song uh -huh. that I couldn't feel. I had to feel that song. Yes. And that's why I went into writing music. Uh -huh. And I went into writing it, and I had to feel that music to write it. And I have written all kinds of music. I have written uh, gospel, mm -hmm. a lot of gospel music, and secular music as well. I have written uh, songs like uh, uh, Ricky Van Shelton sings one of my songs, mm -hmm. I'll Leave This World Loving You. Dolly Parton sings one of my songs, Great. Yellow Roses. Uh, let's talk about your first album. The first time, um, oh my goodness, it's been years ago. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I had to save up my money for uh, when I was uh, being a waitress. Mm -hmm. And it took me forever to be able to do my first album. In fact, uh, it was uh, just a little bitty thing, you know. Mm -hmm. How many songs do you remember? There was uh, three at three first, songs. and then, mm -hmm. it, then I got five on. Mm -hmm. But there was three. Yeah. And uh, it was fun. I, I, I used house musicians, and they were friends of mine. And wh what was the reaction of... Your Everybody family, loved it. Your, yeah. My my mom and uh -huh. my dad they uh -huh. they liked it. And as long as I didn't uh, do any uh, really really jazzy jazzy mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. my dad was okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was the idea that uh, he didn't want he really didn't want me in clubs. Uh -huh. That was his idea. He didn't want me in clubs. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Havonis, I worked in a club. I yes. started working at a club when mm -hmm. I was 18 years old. 18 years old. And I was a regular in this club. Mm -hmm. And the people in this club in Santa Ana... That was a jazz club or...? No, it was a country... Country club. Country, country bar. Country Great. <laughs> and I was, in, I was working there. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody liked me. Mm -hmm. I, I drew the crowd. And so, you're going to laugh about this. Mm -hmm. My 21st birthday... Uh-huh. See, I did not know that the owner and them did not know how mm -hmm. old I was. Uh -huh. And my 21st birthday, I get to the, to the club, and there's this big cake. Uh -huh. And it says, happy birthday, Wendy Lynn. You finally made it. And I looked at him, and I said, what? He says, Wendy, I've known all these years mm -hmm. that you were underage, but you never, you always conducted yourself as a lady. Mm -hmm. I never had to worry about you. So that made me feel good, you know. Of course, mom and dad didn't feel too good about it, but I mean, I, I did, that's the only thing I knew. That's the only so. thing I knew. Because like I said, ever since I was a little kid, oh, I used to take uh, little things, pretend like I was in microphone mm -hmm. and things like that, like little kids do. And that was my dream. I would dream about me being on stage, about people screaming and yelling, you know. And uh -huh. when I got older and I got to go and be on Gillies, mm -hmm. Mickey Gillies program. That was, I loved it, you know. I, I loved the, the people. And it was like, if I could just see one person smiling uh -huh. or even a tear, I did my job. Yes. Because that's, that's what true. it was about. Yes. I have a question about Elvis Presley. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. May I ask this question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just tell us about Elvis Presley. Well, when I first met Elvis Presley, uh -huh. I was doing a show in Memphis, Tennessee. And Elvis's uncle, Uncle Vernon, mm -hmm. I mean, Uncle Vester, came to my show. Mm -hmm. And he liked it. And it was country. Okay. And so uh, after the show, he came up to me and he said, I'd like you to meet my nephew. And I normally didn't do things like that. And I said, well, okay. So we're driving. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me his nephew's Elvis Presley. Well, 
That didn't really mean too much to me. I was never an Elvis fan. Mm -hmm. I was always in country music. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we get to uh, Graceland and I go walking in and I stood at the in the foyer and I'm standing there because he told me to stand there and wait. I'm standing there and here comes Elvis. And he walks up to me. He says, I understand you're a country singer. And I said to him, I said, yes. And he says, and your daddy's a preacher. And I said, yes. Well, we developed a bond. And for one year, mm -hmm. we were prayer partners. Whenever he had a problem or something, he'd call me. Or I would go there. And, and I would stay at his uh, uncle's house. You know, there was never anything at that time going on between us. Mm -hmm. A year later, when I... Uh, Never forget it. It was in 1975. He came up to me uh -huh. and he said, would you be my girlfriend? He gave me a name. What he was gave, the answer? <laughs> he gave everybody names. Mine was uh -huh. Angel. Uh -huh. He called me Angel. Angel. And so he says, Angel, will you be my girlfriend? And I looked at him and I said, yes. But there'll be stipulations, okay. Mm -hmm. And he understood that, and we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of fun together. I mean, we would go out and lay on the lawn, mm -hmm. and we would look at the clouds and make pictures. And he'd tell me, always say, "Look for me in the clouds," always. And uh, he handed me on my birthday that year. He handed me my TLC. Uh -huh. the, the men got the TCB, which was taking care of business. The women, we got the TLC. Mm -hmm. And mine is number 13, and it is signed. And so that is what he gave to me on my birthday that year. Jesus. Then as the years went on, and I, you know, I, would, I was on tour a lot, uh -huh. and he knew that. Uh -huh. But we would keep in contact with one another. And uh -huh. whenever I could come to, uh, to Memphis, I did. But basically, it was California. I would go to his places in California, uh -huh. Palm Springs and stuff. And we had a, a neat relationship. He was a loving and caring person. Believe me, he was not what people are saying about him being a... Uh, a sex maniac and all that. Oh. He wasn't. He was not like that. He was very and religious. Oh my goodness. We would sit and sing songs together, things like that. We had a lot of fun together. And uh, he was like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't look at him as a star. Oh. Okay. And that's one reason he said he loved me. And he told me that because, and I reminded him of his mother, he said. Oh. And he said to me, you know, he says, Angel, he says, you're not like the others. Well, one day he came in uh -huh. and he wanted to give me a car. And I looked at him and I said, I can't take this. I love you for who you are, not for what you can give me. Mm -hmm. And he kind of had a hurt look on his face. And then he just smiled. He says, thank you, Angel. Because he knew I wasn't after anything. Yes. I never had been. Thank you very much for sharing this story. Thank You're you. You're welcome. So, but I have to interrupt our conversation for one more time. For okay. Very short commercial break. Don't go away. Hazarin nahari rutsun hing tvakanets kasats Yerevan printing da pahuvume. Երևանի սրտում հանրապետության 58 հասցեում Էրնիսաժի հարևանությամբ գործում է Մեյսան հնաոճ իրերի խանութ սրահը, որտեղ վաճառվող իրերի շքեղ տեսականին ձեզ մտովի կտեղափոխի վերածննդի դարաշրջան։ 
հանդի կարվեստի աշխար։ Այստեղ դուք կարող եք տեսնել բարֆրարժեք արվեստի այնպիսի գործեր, որոնց համարժեքը ցուցադրվում է աշխարը հրճակ թանգարաններում։ Մեր հմուտ մասնագետները հաշված ռոպեների ընթացքում բացարձակ անվճար կգնահատեն ձեր հնաոճիրերն ու կոկնեն վաճառքի հարցում։ Մեսը բարֆրարժեք արվեստի աշխար։ Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to high show and my guest is incredibly beautiful Wendy Lynn Adams. Thank you. you said you are a songwriter. Yes. If I'm going to ask you to sing a song of you. Oh, I would love to sing this song because you know what, Havana? Uh-huh. This goes out to all of our service people that uh-huh. are in the service, you know. They can't be home with their families. They can't, uh-huh. and they're children, and this song goes out to them. Yes, the microphone is here. Please. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Daddy. You're forever in my heart Merry Christmas, Daddy My love I send to you I really love my country But I miss my daddy too Mommy took us to see Santa To tell him what him for you daddy underneath our Christmas tree I could not understand it for a tear fell from his eye I don't ever remember seeing Santa cry so merry D- 
daddy too I really love my country But I miss my daddy too Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great song and you're a you great performer. You know, Havana, performer. it only took, uh, it took me 15 minutes to write that. Really? Yeah. Just 15 minutes? Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Wendy, mm. I have a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can surprise you. Okay. But I will try my best. Okay. Okay. So, um, Give me a minute, please. Uh huh. Who is this? Oh my goodness! This me? is my my beautiful Wendy Lynn Adams. Oh my God! Did you like the picture? Thank you, thank you so much. I like it. Okay, that's yours. This oh. is not from Santa Claus. This is from Santa Jovanes. Okay, Santa Jovanes. <laughs> because that's my artwork. Yes, okay. it is. He drew so. this. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy that you like it. Yes, I do. Uh, but I have another question. Okay. I want to ask a question about your husband, about your king. Oh, my King David. About, yes, Mr. David. Tell us about, uh, about you. I don't like ask uh, personal questions, yeah. but I cannot miss <laughs> this part, you know. I love him, I respect him. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, I met David in church. Uh-huh. And uh, I automatically had this major crush on him. Uh-huh. But he was always with this other girl and uh -huh. stuff, and I thought he was married. And I was on tour a lot. I didn't want nobody to know who I was. Mm -hmm. I just wanted them, did not know that I was a singer or nothing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to love me for who I was, okay? Yes. So anyway, I fed, when I wasn't on tour, I fed the homeless. And somebody in our church, they brought a bunch of food. First time it ever happened, uh -huh. they brought a bunch of, I couldn't carry it. And I made the statement, I need a man. And one of the ladies in the church uh -huh. said, Dave, Wendy needs a man. <laughs> and I'm going, oh my God, anybody but him, you know? And so I turned to this girl. Uh -huh. And I said to her, I said, do you mind if I borrow your husband? She said, he's not my husband. Uh -huh. I said, he's not married? She says, no. I said, okay. I went home that <laughs> night and I dreamt of our wedding. And uh, I, my car was acting up and David, he had access to the uh -huh. idol auction. And so my pastor told me to call David and uh, he would take me to the auction. Uh -huh. So I did. And that was our first date. Then we would, you know, we would walk on the beach together uh -huh. and stuff like that. And then, it was really funny, he asked me, you know, we were going to go after church, we were going to go have dinner. Yes. And so, again, he doesn't know who I am. And so here we walk into this place and everybody starts screaming, Wendy Lynn is here, Wendy Lynn is here. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, and so they're, you got to sing, you got to sing, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm going, I'm with somebody, you know. And they said to me, come on, Wendy, one song. <laughs> and so I said, okay, this is Leap Year. And mm -hmm. it was Leap Year. And I said, I am, you've never seen me with anybody. I said, I'm with somebody tonight that I dearly love. Uh -huh. And I said, so this is going to be like a proposal. So I started singing, could I have this dance for uh -huh. the rest of my life? And here David is, and I, I'm with a microphone now. now they're videotaping, they're, they're taping all of this. Mm -hmm. And so here I am with a microphone and I'm walking over to David. And he's jumping up and down and I'm going, oh my God, what's this crazy guy doing? You know, and because I'm trying to remember the words of the song, right? Right, right? He's distracting me. And so after the song, I do the autographs and everything that they wanted, you know, and the pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we go out to the car. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, you know, David, I really would make you a good wife. Mm -hmm. And he looks up at me and he said, didn't you hear me? I said, yes. Well, then he shared with me the Lord the day before had always shared with him that I was going to be his wife. Oh. So when we got married, Havana, it was hilarious. Is the mm -hmm. fact, well, I took the song, like I said, I'm, I'm a writer, right? Uh -huh. So I took the song, could I have this dance? Uh -huh. And I changed it, could I have your heart for the rest of my life? And so we sang that to each other uh, during our wedding. Great. 
Great. And uh, we have been married to almost, well, 23 years, going to 24. And uh, he's still my King David. I've called yes. him Command King David. And I married a preacher. Remember, my daddy was a preacher. Yes. And so I married a preacher. And we have a TV show, too. I know. And we just came from it. Precious Promises with David and Wendy Lynn Adams. Perfect. And it is amazing. You know, like I said, my husband being able to share this. Uh -huh. And what's so good at Havana's is all the years that we've been married. And one thing I did say to him before we got married, don't ever take my music and my uh -huh. acting from me. Uh -huh. You know, no, please Bravo. don't ever take it. That's very important. And he never has. Yes. And he goes out there with the best of them, you know. He don't like to get his picture taken. <laughs> but, you know, he, he realizes that they take mine and, and uh, the autographs. He understands that. And he's not a jealous man. Which is I, very important. Yes. At this point. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Can I say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. But before, I want to give you... Another surprise. Oh Plain, did you like it? Oh, That's yours. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Wow. Uh -huh. The Christmas balls. Everything. Yeah, everything. I love My it. My dear Wendy Lynn Adams, this is special for you. Oh, this is thank your you. Christmas gift present from um, Garden Flowers. Oh, my. From our sponsor. Oh, One of our sponsors. That's so wonderful. This is special for you. Thank you. The colors, everything is just, you know. <laughs> now thank I can you. say Merry Christmas. Thank you, sweetheart. Merry Christmas. I love and you. thanks for accepting my invitation and coming to the show. Thank, thank you, you very for much. inviting me. Of course. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this was High Show on AMGA, Armenian Media Group of America television channel. Stay with us.